And we're back. Oh, I'm bleeding again. Ouch. Must be that cut. Damn. Okay. 5 16 socket. All right. You mean 5 5 8 5 8 socket, socket. 5 16 Allen. And special radius driver for driving the shadows out. Really important to have the radius tip on it. Hmm? I'll Not to see. Hmm. Very important to have a radius tip on it. Got it. And I've got this thing here to take the heads off. Okay. Right. So the first thing you do is get these out. It's done with this. Look at that, came out easy. That one didn't come out. That one did. Two for three. Three for four. Okay, now this one just spinning because that nut's loose. Mm. So we put the tighten it up. And we'll try it again. Try it again. It's not coming. Hmm. So we'll try it again. Okay, we'll take this one away. Tools. Tools. Tool. Tool. Big one. And I'm missing a socket I need. One the one that's missing. We'll come back to that in a minute. So we'll go ahead and pull this one apart. junk box, huh? Unless you want to reuse them. No. Don't think so. You don't think so? Junk box! What about Mario? Oh, Mario Mar whatever's in that box, Mario can have. He might want to reuse this. It's... I guess we can move the box over here to drop it. No, no, we don't make it too close. Uh -oh. Ah! I dropped it on my, my steel toe toes. So far we don't have too much junk in the junk box, but we'll throw it right here underneath the bench so we can just drop the junk in the junk box. Whenever that happens. Here we go. How do we get my top? Okay, one trick we do. Mm -hmm. Tighten it tightly. We used a half inch gun because it has more shock. Shock and all. We have to use an adapter to go down to a 30 A's. And half the times, that will pull it. Whereas the little small one doesn't have enough hit to do it. Look at that. See that? Hit it. Because this has a lot bigger hammer in it than that little small tower. Even though this is a 175 foot pound torque wrench, which is three times most of them, because it's another Ingus and Ram. This one here has 600 and something foot pounds reverse. Different. So that's one of the tricks that uh, I've learned over the years how to do. Is that it? Next, next thing? The next thing is pull the socket off that we didn't pull off. And then the bunk box is right there. Now, right below. Which is now closer. Clean tools off, see? Yeah, that's a damn tire. Okay, now we take our special radius ball driver. Okay, ball driver. Now if you stick just a Phillips screwdriver in there, it swipes everything out and really gets hard to get out. Okay. If you put a center punch in there, it has even more problems. Center. Play. Away. And if you just hit with a flat punch, like that, it burrs the end of the shaft over. Okay. And it makes the threads hard to use again. So the trick is to use the ball punch. So you just keep track of the hole there. Yep. Coming out the other end. Mm -hmm. See, I just, it just goes right in the hole where it wants to go, yep. wherever that is. Right the other end. It doesn't do any damage. So these are all 
special tools I've made over the years because they work. Perfect. I'll make sure when I get home I'll find my one of my numerous punches and make up your own. Make up my own. Not that I stripped that many. Now if I was smart I'd make one that's a lot longer. I'd take one like long like that and you can hit it through it all the way through, but mm -hmm. that's too much work. Okay, now the shafts come out. You look at the wear on them. They don't look too bad. Look pretty good. Put the shin washers in there. Hmm. The bottom head? Just a one. Why do you know what to put put back on? Who cares? <laughs> yep, there's one on that one too. Oh, well that's, that's a that. thick one though. Because when you after you rebuild the arms, you do what you're supposed to do by fitting them all correctly. See, that's a real thin one, not a thick one. So right now it doesn't matter, but later on it does. Okay. Technically, it doesn't really matter anyway because it doesn't. Um, now, to get the arms out, those spacers have to come out. See how that one's falling out and that one's not? So you go like that, and like that, and one thing will pop out. There you go. Then, the arms can come out. Nice and easy. So you have to kind of come out at an angle to get them out. Okay. Now that spacer can jam up in there too, in that case. And it also gives me one more opportunity to bang on Harley parts. <laughs> hey, don't dent my parts. Don't scratch the paint. So you give me all those nice comments about how I'm beating up your parts. Too damn bad. Mm. So, yeah. not too much wear on the tip, see? Yeah. Is that a good one? Yeah. Barely any wear on them. So we can either keep these and use them, rebush them, or we can uh, put some SNS in the ones that have longer bushings in them. But these ones are adequate. Yeah, but why wouldn't you? You've already got the shaft. See how short the shafts are? Yeah. The shafts are no longer, so longer bushings don't help you a lot. Right. Well, why wouldn't you just keep it? Now, see how tight these are? They look pretty tight. Mm. Now it's a 50-50 of whether it's going to make noise or not if you don't replace them. Now this would be a low mileage motor. We could probably fudge it and not do it. Yeah. But if we don't do it, it might make noise. If the bushings are loose, it'll sound like you got loose valves all the time. Mm. It'll be click, 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 click all over the place. Okay. That's one of those noises you can never trace. See the wear on the end of here? All right, okay. so there's that one. So now these are all apart. Clean. And you can see how much damage it is by banging these on the table. See that? It almost knocks some of the corrosion off by doing that. So funny. Heard something in there. Oh, space is still in there. We might need that. This was done in 4 of 79. Hmm. So how can you cast it in 4 of 79 with a 79 bike? Hmm. Because they switched it in August. <laughs> to the new year. Oh, this must have been the one they had that. So that must mean they must have been about three weeks behind production when they cast these things to when they actually went onto a bike. So your bike must be a real late 79 bike. Okay. So you got O-ring style heads? I oh. don't. See, late 79 to 80, they went to rubber band instead of O-ring. And see, you have rubber bands, which is a late 79 design. Okay. Or early 80. Which matches your casting dates here, right here. Okay, so it's... So this is a real late 79 bike. Real late. The last month of production, probably. You must have a really high VIN number. And that looks like it says 1980 for a casting date, doesn't it? Well, so do you think that... I think that, this top the... is different than what was on that bike originally. Yeah, well, one of them we know is replaced. All right. Yeah, but these both have 80 numbers on them. Why the hell would they have 80 numbers? I think they replaced both the heads. I think the top end's different was on the lower end, so... I'm not oh. sure why this stuff's all been changed, because why would you change your heads out? Yeah. But, oh well. My guess is that Harley was probably using their 80 casting before it was actually 1980. Yeah. It'd be my guess. But, so anyway, basically this top end's from a, for an 80 bike. A 1980 bike, not just 80 inch. But there is no difference between 80 or 74 inch on the heads. Yeah. It's all the same. 
See those big gouge marks in there that are in there? What the hell happened there? I don't know. I didn't do it. Oh, that was me. You know what? That was... Did you have these banging around on top of those uh, heads over there? Cylinders? That, no, because the cylinders were on the other side. Yeah, well, there's a big gouges in there. That's uh, lengthwise gouges, so... Uh, you know, when you pull them out of the heads, it, it screws them up right here and here. Not the bike, so I know it wasn't in the bike. I don't know. So, it'll, be, it'll be fine. It might be from before, too. Maybe this is the one that had the new gasket on it. Yeah. Oh, well. All right, so let's get these heads apart. Where's my compressor? Let's see what the actual rest of stuff looks like. The last part left. So. Keepers. Right. Don't lose the keepers. Stock springs. Junk. Mm. Yeah, factory clearance. Look at that. Did you hear it? Yeah. Ooh, no seals. Oh, got burgers on there already. Nice crappy valves. Just a, just a hint of starting to, trying to go all there, but the normal full length gulling the O's you have because they're crappy material and crappy everything else. So it's just the old stocks crappy valves. Nothing new about those. No valve seals, obviously. Yep. Got the early 80 inch collars on. All the stuff that should be in there. It's got the split keeper valve guide, which is a stock guide. So it's got a keeper for a collar. Yeah. Instead of being a one piece guide. Most of the time these were chilled iron, which means they're heat treated cast iron guides, which are part of the damn rock. That's how they make them live a little bit. They make them extremely hard. Yeah. And the valves are soft, so. They actually wear about equally. <laughs> One keeper. Two keeper. Keeper. Make sure you don't lose your keepers. Very important. These are junk. Don't worry. These are junk. I don't care if you want to. We're not going to reuse them. All right. no, that's factory clearance. You see that? Ready? Yeah. Wow. That's acceptable. Well, you only get about 10,000 miles to a top end, and you got six, right? Mm. Yeah, that's AMF. Now, this looks like it's almost like a chrome stem in this thing. Be a chrome stem. Well, we're assuming this hasn't had any valve jobs done. We don't know. <clears throat> like I said, you're assuming it hasn't been worked on, but we know it's got a different head gasket in there, so it's not stock. It was a part at one time. It's definitely got worn out guides in it already. The seats look like they're relatively high. The exhaust spigots look pretty, pretty good for a shovel head. They're not too awfully worn out yet. I think the threads are. Hanging. I don't know why you got a three ace bolt jammed into there. That's a three ace helicoil. I know. It's that. So was you're weird. you're already oversized and then oversized again to a three ace stud. Hmm? It's got a helicoil three ace hole, not a helicoil five sixteenths like it should be. So this mm -hmm. is pretty screwed up. Because shovel the pipes don't have room for three ace bolts. <laughs> They don't fit. So we might have to do a little work on the that part of the head. We got those other heads too that came with the whole project bike. Well, maybe we'll use a different set of heads. They're a high flow stock Harley high flow head. Oh, you got some 76 castings? Yeah. Ooh. Or actually 75 castings. Oh, 76s. The English ones, the good ones. 
I got them over there. I can show them to you. Yeah, if you want more power, I'll use those. Well, it's, if we're going to do anything, I'd rather use those. Than... These ones are uh, worn out too, so. Yeah, see. You take this, clean them up, put a bunch of red goop around here, do a quick lap, put it back together. It's rebuilt. It's on eBay. You get 600 bucks for these. Hmm. Not that they would ever do that. Not that they would ever do that. I've never seen that when a customer brings some heads in the back they bought them today. No, never. <laughs> it's almost a given that they that's gonna weigh it. Yeah. Some people have no scruples. Or morals. Alright, there's two keepers, one collar. Crappy spring. Got a big lip on it. Yeah, look about the same. Junk box. See, it's a good thing we moved the box over here. All that junk can put away. Yep. Alright, so we got to get all this stuff cleaned up, blasted, cleaned. See how bad everything really is. Yep. This is probably got the same three inch hole in it. No, this yep. one's got the correct size in it. See how yep. small it is? Yep. And it. So I'm thinking this was the one they probably. Well, it's definitely screwed up now, so. There's no way to fix it without welding it up? Uh, you could put a thick wall insert in there, but you have to go another size bigger. Right. But maybe we could use like a time cert. Yeah. Time certs are a little thin certs. They're uh, two sizes up from standard. The big fat inserts are three sizes up, so a 5 16 would be a 9 16 on a thick one, and a thin one would be a half inch. So, right now these are, uh, it's a 3 8 helicoil on the ID. The outside is going to be a 7 16 uh -huh. thread. So the next one would be up to a half inch. I had that backwards, it's half inch OD with a three size bigger. It'd be seven sixteenths bigger for two size bigger. I was, starting, I was starting at three eighths instead of five sixteenths. Okay. You want me to take those, pull those other heads out and look at them? So, yeah, we can, but we're going to clean these up first. So, anyway, there's a wrap for this stuff.